Hey everybody, welcome back to How It's Done. A few weeks back I noticed how dark it was in front of my house with even the outside sconce on. And I have only one outside sconce, so I ordered two online and I replaced one. But today we're going to be showing you how to install a sconce where there is no box or power. Um, basically we're going to be cutting a hole in the brick, uh, running the wires, adding the box, and then getting it all wired up in the ceiling. And we're going to be linking it to this light over here that's existing so that they will come on together. These lights I bought on Amazon, I think it was like 70, 75 bucks a piece. Um, they're LED, they put off quite a bit of light. Um, never going to have to worry about changing out the bulbs. And they come on at night and go off in the morning, so um, I can actually just leave them on all the time and not worry about it. And they'll come on and off on their own. So, yeah, uh, let's get after it. First thing we're going to have to do is find out where the box needs to be so that it's matching the height of the other one. Um, and it's actually four bricks down from, well, four horizontal bricks down is where I want the center to be. And since there's a full brick on either side, I know the center is going to be about where the grout is. So basically where I had the flagpole previously. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my box and mark this out. I am going to be using a single gang plastic box. Um, a lot of the times for light fixtures, people will use a rounded box. really doesn't matter. Uh, rounded boxes, obviously, if you have a, a rounded base, it's going to do a lot better job of uh, not seeing anything. But because this is the, here, that's the back mount plate, and you can kind of see where when this goes on there, if it was just a round on the back, you might see the tabs a little bit, probably not, but it's possible. I've seen a lot of times where they use these plastic boxes, uh, single gang style, instead of the round ones, but cutting this square is going to be a lot easier than cutting it rounded, so yeah, let's uh, get that marked and we'll start cutting it. Alright, so I got this marked out, left a little bit of space on the side there uh, so that this box will actually be able to slide in in case I don't cut perfectly straight because um, I am going to be using an oscillating tool with a diamond blade which is meant for cutting tile or removing grout uh, so that'll work just fine So we got this cut, but I don't think the blade went completely all the way through. So we're just going to... A few smacks. I suppose I probably could have gone with the grout in the middle and gotten that out. So the holes cut, I've used, uh, once I got the brick knocked out, I went ahead and cleaned it off a little bit better uh, since I could get the cutter in there a little bit further that way. Um, and then I just used a hammer and a screwdriver to chisel out the rest of it. So, like I said, I did leave a somewhat decent sized gap on either side, but yeah, that fits in there pretty tight. Alright, so not, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to make this out, but 
basically I've taken a paddle bit and drilled a few holes back here. I found that the stud is right in the center um, of where these two holes are drilled. And then I got a hole directly above that with the paddle bit. Basically what you got is you got the studs, which are sitting like this. And then you've got a piece of plywood on top of that. And then you've got this uh, gray uh, weatherproofing material on there. And then you'll have some spacers. I don't know if you can make out that one that's in there, but there's one right there um, that the bricks get put on to keep them from you know falling too far away from the house. So what I'm going to have to do is go up here in the attic, find the top plate, and drill a hole in that. And then it should come through in here. So back in this little cavity where I drilled the hole. So yeah, not a lot of space. There's probably about two inches between the studs. So I'm not too worried about being able to grab the wire as long as I drill it in the right stud bay. So fingers crossed. All right, so I'm up in the attic. Uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to tell this really well, but that's this soffit right there. Uh, I mean, you can kind of see the top plate. And this is the corner of the house. There you go. That's the corner of the house, and the, or the garage rather. And right there, right where those two meet, is where I'm gonna have to drill the hole to get this down. So, very little space in here. Um, we're looking at. For, well, fortunately, this uh, goes from a two by twelve to a two by four. Which I'm not really happy to try and trust that it'll support my weight, so I'm going to have to kind of crawl my big self over there and see if I can get this drilled, so. Alright, so I'm not going to lie, that was not easy to pull off, but we got it there. So, like I said, this is 12.3. It's got the black, red, bare copper, and white. Um, and again, the reason I'm doing this is because at that fixture over there, it's actually got a 12-3 run to it. It's actually a 14-3, but I'm doing 12-3 just because that's what I have. Um, and it's got one that's constantly got power and uh, one that's controlled by the switch inside. Thing is, the switch inside also controls the front door light. So the way this house was wired, if this front door light is on, then uh, these two sconce lights would be on. So you can't have the sconces on without the front door light. Um, so since these have a photo cell on them already, I'm just gonna give them constant power and that way I can use the switch to turn on and off the front door light. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this box put on there. We'll put some liquid nail around it and uh, while that's drying, I will make up the connections in the attic. All right, so it's been about four hours. Uh, the liquid nail has dried. To a degree it's not 100 percent dry went ahead and put the bracket on i got the wires coming through um, the nice thing about this light fixture is it's got these little notches here so you don't have to struggle with lining anything up you just kind of set it in place and put the two screws on in the sides over there and over here and you're good so yeah we're just going to go ahead and wire this up and uh, call it done so i'm going to put a cap on the red one since that's the one controlled by the switch and the black and white, obviously black to black, white to white, and then ground to ground. So.
there you have it. And that's all there is to it. Looks uh, pretty good. And uh, as you can see, it's about the same height as the other one. Comes right to the top line. Same thing over here, right to the line. So, yeah, pretty good progress. And uh, we got our sidewalk supervisor out here, right, Peggy? Yeah, say hi for the camera. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us on how it's done. Uh, hit that like button if this was helpful. And go ahead and subscribe to see more helpful videos like this as they come out.